So we're getting into week three here on farm and it is one of my favorite times of year. I get to experience it several times a year, which is a really cool thing that we take the birds from inside and we move them outside. And here they are, eight chicken tractors behind me, full of birds, happy, healthy, living their life out on pasture, as well as my homestead batch on the other side of the farm. So the birds are growing really, really well. I'm excited for week three because it is the week that we send the birds out on the grass. The birds have been living in this shed. It's my brooder shed. It's got lights, it's safe, it's warm, it's cozy. But gradually, you can see that window in the back. I've been opening it up to the outside, decreasing their heat over the last two weeks and getting them hardened off to where they're growing feathers so that they're you know, a little more sturdy for being outside and then they're gonna go outside in the chicken tractors. So let's take a look at what our birds look like right now. So look at those feathers. That's beautiful. This is a good looking bird. Birds have been progressing really, really well. They're actually moving really, really fast and I'm thinking about moving them out earlier uh, than you know the full three weeks and the brooder will put you down. But yeah, last note on this bird. See those feathers? Good size. Right there, no, no tail feathers. Still fuzzy, but uh, we're starting to feather out here. Oops, sorry. We don't necessarily like to be handled that much. So at this point, they have just a few more days in here, then they're gonna head outside. It's awesome. Let's head to tomorrow. Wait a second. I'm not out in the brooder. I'm out in a field. Oh, it's nice. It's so nice out here. So behind me, you can see I have eight chicken tractors all set up, ready to go. That's what we did today. The birds are in the brooder, they're growing really fast, they're doing really well, it's a good time of year. They grow a little bit faster in the summer, I find, because the ambient temperature is so much nicer and warmer during the day that I can leave the brooder open, they get even more fresh air, and the temperature is just better, you know, it's versus the cold season when the days are shorter uh, and you have them under lights for longer, if they're under lights and stuff, you know, it just takes, I don't know, sunshine grows things better. So with it being sunny outside and it being summer, the birds are growing great. I'm getting them ready to go out in the field because that time is coming really, really soon. Um, so we spent the day, you can see in the video right now, we moved the chicken tractors from where they left on the last rotation to where they're headed on the new rotation. So in my main pasture, I have the last rotation, which you can see, I draw an arrow on a map right now, and then the current rotation. So not a big move, but still something that we had to move them to different parts of the field. I'm not running over the same part of the field twice this season. I typically try not to do that unless weather or unforeseen circumstances kind of force my hand. But in general, I make one pass on a field. Uh, I set up the chicken tractors. They're going down the pasture. Uh, setting up the homestead tractor as well today, working on that, and uh, just getting these guys ready for a move. So with no chirping birds around me, and I have some nice, quiet, serene pasture land to talk in, I wanted to answer some of the questions that you guys wrote in on the comments on YouTube because the series is going out on YouTube. So Chaplain123 asks, why not use hay instead of wood chips? I use the pine shavings, not wood chips. I use pine shavings because they're absorbent, they're clean, and they're cheap in my area. So wood chips would be bigger chips, thicker, a little heavier, um, just would mat down, wouldn't be as fluffy, it would be a little rougher underneath the birds, so I don't use those. Um, I use the pine shavings because they're absorbent and they're clean. I don't use hay uh, just because it's not as absorbent, uh, hay or straw. Straw is better because it, it's like a hollow tube and it has some air in it, uh, and that's good for bedding for winter egg layers. Uh, but for in the brooder, the hay is not quite as absorbent as the pine shavings are. Uh, it also has the potential to bring in mites. Uh, anybody who's slept in a hayloft before knows that you can wake up and be covered in little tiny hay mites. Uh, that's not always the case, but it could bring up stuff from outside where the pine shavings come from a mill. It's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more safer uh, for my birds until they're kind of hardened off and make sure they don't get any lice or mites or anything. So I use the pine shavings. You wanna use pine shavings versus cedar shavings because the oils in the cedar shavings can irritate a chicken's lungs and give them long-term respiratory health effects. Um, but yeah, pine shavings is what I use. Shelly Smith asks, do you get your birds vaccinated? And the answer for that for me is yes. Uh, wild birds carry the Merrick's disease or can carry Merrick's disease. And you'll see sometimes where a flock of birds will land like right here in front of the chicken tractors, eat and poop and have, eat grasshoppers and it's great. And then they'll all take off. And that's one of those things with a pasture-based system is that you have to be prepared for wild birds. Uh, they're bringing in pathogens of their own. And that's something that you have to contend with versus a barn system that you can keep a little bit more closed off to the outside world and a little bit more safe um, for the birds as far as, you know, 
uh, biosecurity is concerned. So I get my birds vaccinated for Merrick's disease. Merrick's disease, uh, because it's a common chicken ailment. It's uh, chicken herpes, I have a video on it, um, where I talk to the chicken doctor, and it can cause a high rate of mortality in your flock. I've had Merrick's on the farm before. I sent my birds out to get tested, and they tested positive for Merrick's. I haven't had it in a while, but that's also because I've started vaccinating and I manage my flocks a little bit better and a little bit differently as the years go on. So I do vaccinate, it's about 23 cents per bird for those vaccinations that happens. I think it might happen in the egg itself. Um, but yeah, for now they get vaccinated. It, it helps protect me. Just trying to do my best here. Uh, Walt Lars wants to know, what do you do with the manure and shavings in the brooder once you're done? I have a compost pile out back where I'm composting brewer's grains, I'm composting greens from the gardens, I'm clippings, anything, uh, you know, depending on if it's good compost material or not. And in those compost piles, the manure and pine shavings make a great addition. Uh, the pine shavings absorb the manure and the liquid that's, you know, comes out of the back of the chicken, uh, holds it all together and that nitrogen, that carbon, they're just like this nice little bundle of compost. So if you have a compost pile, the brooder shavings or the brooder bedding material is a nice addition to that. Last question I have is from HL Hadish. Uh, how many bags of feed have I used so far? Let's go back to the brooder. I have to check my list. So I keep a tracking sheet with all my batches of chickens. This tracking sheet follows them from day one to the end, the very end, and then it gets entered into a Google Drive sheet uh, at the end. So, so far I've used nine, pound, nine bags of feed at 50 pounds per bag. You can do that math. And I've used three bales of shavings. Let's head on a Friday. So now it's Friday and look how branded I am right now. Spar Marketing Solutions. <laughs> and uh, birds are getting really big as I keep saying in all of these video clips, I realize because they're just like astoundingly big. They grow really fast and you'll find that out if you try to raise chickens. So with them getting so big, uh, the bigger they get, the tighter the brooder space gets, the more they're pooping, the more they're on top of their poop and the more I'm eager to get them out in the field. Now when it goes time, comes time to move them out in the field, which we might do today. Um, I keep a close eye on the weather because I don't want to send them out when it's going to rain because they haven't dealt with rain and wind as much before. If it's going to be windy and rainy, I've actually lost birds that way um, because, you know, they just die of exposure because they are not properly hardened off. I've been gradually decreasing their temperature and uh, turning the lights off. I left that window and another window open last night and I had a cross breeze. It's been getting down to the mid to low 50s at night and it's going to be mid to low 50s for the next two nights and then it gets into the mid to low 60s at night with highs in the 80s. But we have a certain percentage of rain. So if there's a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain and it doesn't look like a big system, it looks like little tiny clumps, uh, I'm more likely to put them out if they need to go out because we won't get a long extended period of rain. The worst thing I can do is send them out and have a long like three, four days of rain and wind and cold and they'll just be cold and unhappy and uh, could develop problems later on. It's just a bad scene. So keeping an eye closely on the weather uh, and see you know what happens. They might go out today, but more on that on the next little clippy hang on there. So it's Saturday and the birds are outside. Awesome, really, really awesome, and kind of an easy day, honestly. So let's talk a little bit more about yesterday, Friday. I was watching the weather, making a determination on whether or not the birds were gonna go out, and they did, and I'm really happy. We've had some awesome weather. Birds have done really well. They've adapted nicely. I've had no mortality, and life is good. So we have this home bat, homestead batch right behind me and my full production batch in the pasture over further east on the farm. You can see, that's my house, that's my kid's playground, and then chicken tractor, backyard, so good. Uh, so what we do, just to shine a little bit more light on the moving out into pasture process, is that I come up with my trailer, my little buggy, the birds are all you know, in the brooder, ready to go out, don't know what's gonna, about to happen. Uh, I typically do this uh, in the evenings when the birds are all calmed down, or early, early in the morning. Uh, I did it during the day, uh, for better light for YouTube, so sorry chickens. Um, come up with our buggy, and unload the crates into the, the chicken coop, the brooder, and use it to kind of section off the chicks and pack them in a little bit tighter uh, if the, all the birds are spread out. And what that does is make it easier. So we don't have to move our feet, we just shift back and forth as we pass chicks into the crates. And as we fill up the crates, we just pile more crates on, uh, fill up the crates, and then put the crates outside 
uh, into the buggy and then drive them you know, onto the trailer, pulled by the buggy, and then bring them out to pasture. Once they're out on pasture, we separate them out where we have one crate per chicken tractor. And that's also how we do inventory of our birds, is that it's 30 birds per chicken tractor, so 30 birds per crate, one crate per chicken tractor. So when we move the crates out, we just put one crate down per chicken tractor and then pull the crates in and gently lift the birds out and shuffle them from the crate into the chicken tractor. We try to handle them as little as possible, let the birds be a little more comfortable. It's kind of a scary process for them. If you can imagine being a chicken, you're going from a comfortable brooder to this whole new world by means of like giants handling you, but such is life. Uh, so the birds got out today. I, we, uh, I had uh, my friend Dyson helping me. Uh, we brought the birds out to the pasture and then I had to do a little bit of work on this homestead chicken tractor. I have a number of chicken tractors here on farm. Uh, and this one, I wanted to put some of that wire mesh around the bottom and do a little work and um, yeah, and then it's good to go. So then these birds came out, sat around for the day. Saturday, they went out on Friday. On Saturday, they just kind of chilled and got used to their surroundings. I went out and checked on morning chores uh, and made sure that nobody had escaped and that everybody was good and there was nobody like looking kind of woozy and made sure the feed and water was good. But in general, easy peasy. Uh, they're small, they don't eat down their feed really far, they don't drink their water down really far, so you just have to check and make sure that they're good. Uh, the second day, or the first like full day that they're out on pasture, I don't actually move them. Uh, I've made sure that they're secure and in there and I want them to adapt to life there. Uh, once they've had that day today uh, to adjust, tomorrow we're gonna move them, so let's go to tomorrow. So it's Sunday today, today was a really exciting day. It was their first move. <clears throat> I have my, this is the production batch, and then there's the homestead batch over in my backyard. Now I did the first move today. What I typically do, uh, I bring the birds either out at night or very early in the morning. Uh, I took them out during the day because it was better for video because I'm doing this YouTube thing, but they were a little frantic and a little crazy. Uh, I give them the day to settle in. I have that next day where I know the tractors are all secure. They don't spend that much time on that grass. Uh, so give them that extra day because they're so small, they do all right. And then I move them the second day. So they're two days in uh, onto the chicken tractors and then I'll move them and then I'll give them two days and I'll move them and then I'll move them every single day after that. So it gives them time to adjust. Also as the farmer, when they're the smallest, they're most likely to escape. They're curious about their new environment. Uh, they see holes underneath the chicken tractors and then they're gonna escape more often. So you're spending more time chasing down baby chicks. I did great, these birds did great where there was none that escaped. Uh, they were excited to be where they're at. Uh, the pasture here is very, very level. Uh, so the trick and tractor lined up really well. But if you have a really bumpy pasture, it can create little divots where those chickens can run out underneath. So they're out on pasture, doing really well. The homestead batch, super easy to move. Took no time at all. I went out and uh, filled up their bucket of water, you know, just topped it off, topped off their feed, moved them forward a little bit, and then did a little dance to celebrate. And that was it. It was a good day. Sunday's a good day. So the chores were light. I had some help, thanks to Dyson, for, uh, for coming out and helping me uh, with my daily chores. I've been doing a lot of chores this summer, and uh, you know, that's, that's raising chickens. Hey look, I'm out in the field. No really, I'm out in the field. And um, here with this batch of broilers, which I did almost nothing with today. Really good. And uh, you know, one of the takeaways from this video series is that while there are days where you do a lot of work or you do a lot of prep or a lot of, you know, ending of chickens, there are days where it's just gloriously simple to have chickens and uh, it's something that you can do if you work a regular nine to five, you can get up and you do your farm chores and they're set for the day, they're done. So with that being their third day out on pasture, they got out on pasture day one, they moved on day two, day three, they just chilled out because their feed is still full, their water is still full, they still had enough grass, I'm letting them adjust to life outside. I could have moved them today, I had a lot of other stuff going on, I actually just dropped pigs off at the processor, uh, so that was a big morning for me, and let the birds just kind of hang out today, relax, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy, actually as I uh, film this, it's Labor Day, uh, everybody else has off today, but uh, I've been working, Kate's been working, and I had a friend help me move pigs this morning, but. Uh, really simple, really easy day, really good, really enjoyable. Uh, the sun is out, <sighs> the birds are chirping, the wind is blowing, it's just, it's good. So, honestly, on to Tuesday.
So it's Tuesday, not a big, uh, nothing huge to report today. Uh, move the birds, uh, now they're on every single day moves. They'll move every single day until the end of their existence. Always on fresh grass, fresh bugs, and it is the beginning of September, which means it's cricket and grasshopper season here on farm, which is an awesome time to be raising chickens. Tons of crickets, tons of grasshoppers, there's lots of stuff for them to eat. And what I like about this specific area of the pasture is that there's a lot of wild mint here. So as I'm moving chicken tractors, as I'm walking around and as the birds are walking around, there's just like a nice mint smell. Sun is shining, it's beautiful outside. Sun is shining in the last video, it's been warm. We're gonna have this uh, really warm week where it gets in the mid to upper 80s during the day and only down into like the upper 60s, lower 70s uh, in the evenings. So a little uh, seasonably warm, uh, kind of like that's this time of year. Um, mortality wise, because you guys have asked me about mortality, I had three dead on arrival and I've lost a, a few along the way. I actually just lost two. We had a real windy, rainy evening last night. More wind than anything else freaks the birds out. And I think a few of them got trampled. Uh, it's just kind of, it happens sometimes. With the three dead on arrival and the few that I've lost, out of 271 birds, I've lost eight. So that's 2.95% or we'll just say 3% mortality uh, over the three weeks plus, the three weeks-ish now that I've had them. Um, so higher than I would like, lower than what is normal. Um, I can tell right now that I have a few birds that have like some weird genetic stuff going on um, where you know a leg is weird or they're just walking a little funny. Um, not sure what to do about that other than, you know, give them the best environment possible and hope for the best. Um, so I may lose one or two more birds as this goes on, but I have a, a fair amount of birds here. That happens. It's part of raising broilers and it's just something that uh, you try to get better at. My mortality over the years has gone way, way down uh, as I become better manager. Uh, and there's a lot of little nuances to that management. But, you know, these things happen. It's not a great thing, but it's a thing. Um, so that's it. That's it for today on Tuesday. Let's head on a Wednesday. Oh wait, this is the last one in the series. That's crazy awesome. Um, just realize that we have a new week coming up. Hmm. So next up comes week four. Week four is just moving these guys every day, making sure they're happy, healthy. You notice a the theme here, happy, healthy, feed, water, move, healthy bedding. Um, yeah, it's great. It's cricket season here on farm, like I just said. So there's plenty of food, plenty of forage for them. They're eating their organic non-GMO feed. They're out in these chicken tractors, life is good. So if you're following along on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, get the chicken updates weekly now with this series, and then chicken updates through the years as we grow this community. Uh, if you want to see this whole series laid out, you can poof, go to the I button right out there and uh, click on that. It brings you over to the farmmarketingsolutions.com website where I have the whole series laid out. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing, all organized for you. And if you wanna build one of these chicken tractors, the links for that are easily found on that page as well. I have a book, I'm a published dude. There's the book, it's kind of great, it's doing really well. People are adopting it, growing chickens all over the country. It's wonderful. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, hang out for the next one, and until next time, I will see you out in the field.